Hello, this is the Growth League Podcast. My name is Caleb Clark, and my mission for this show is pretty simple. It's to learn from marketers on how they're playing the great game of marketing leadership. Their ideas, experiences, perspective, wins and losses, and the playbook that they've established over time. Listen, there's more than one way to lead a marketing team and a marketing function. So if you're a VP, a CMO, director, or someone aspiring to fill one of these marketing leadership roles in the future, tune in to learn from some of the best in the business. I'm trying to really dial in on the storytelling side of it, less so features and benefits, more so is what does this mean? What is the lifestyle? Uh, how does that translate to the, cu- to the customer? Steel toe is a steel toe. Uh, that's a feature, but the benefit is that it keeps you safe, which means that you're confident on the work site, which means you're not stressing, which means you go home to your wife and you had a good day because nothing bad happens and you have you have a great dinner. And today I have the privilege of chatting with Jessica Ogden, who is the director of marketing at Justin Brands. Uh, welcome to the show, Jessica. Glad to have you here. Thank you so much. Appreciate the honor. So throughout your career, I've, I've learned that um, you know you've been involved in a lot of very successful campaigns that result in you know tons of increase in awareness and engagement and other critical business factors, uh, mostly in in Western tangent industries. What does that mean, Western tangent industries? Yeah, it's kind of broad. I mean, uh, Justin, we've got Western and work brands. So it's your everyday construction man. It's the girl that wants to dress up, feel cool wearing cowboy boots to the football tailgate. And it's the working cowboy. It's your rodeo athletes. But really, anybody can work wear cowboy boots. And you feel really confident when you're ca- wearing cowboy boots. So that's something we're trying to keep in the big picture is, yes, it's the working cowboy and that working construction worker. Um, but people love to hunt on the weekends and right. go into boardroom meetings and be be confident and powerful. So cowboy boots can help you do that. That's awesome. And that's a, obviously a strategy meant to open up the total addressable market that that you can serve, right? And um I'm from Calgary. I live in Calgary. So it's very much real in our part of the in our part of the world as well. You know, um, yeah, that's a big rodeo, the Calgary Stampede. <laughs> huge, huge. Yeah. Um you know, as a leader, you have can committed yourself to uh, leading very collaborative teams, being a um, you know source of sort of uh, vision, empowerment, uh, growth opportunity for team. Tell me a little bit about your team today at Justin Brands, and and what role have you adopted as a, as a leader of that team and function? Yeah, and honestly, that's my favorite part of the job is is the people and getting to lead them. I was fortunate right out of college; I had a really good boss who was essentially a mentor and put more and more on my plate. And he allowed me to fail and he corrected me when it needed to be corrected, but he built me up on areas that I wasn't super confident in. He, he poured into me to learn more of those skill sets. And now I have the the privilege of managing a decent amount of people in their early mid twenties. Yeah. And I think that that's a, a privilege to look back and say, I, you know, I want to be the boss and the mentor that I had back then. Uh, and a lot of people aren't fortunate enough to have that person. So it's really important to me to um, just be able to help them foster areas that they're not super strong in and areas that they love, move them over in that direction and um, just kind of help us thrive. But yeah, our team here in house, we've got a production team. So our real creative guys, photo, video, and then we've got a really talented graphic designer and she kind of thinks through the, the vision, the, the look and the feel. We've got a public relations manager that handles all of our outside communications, some of our internal communications as well. Social media manager who's got the the pulse on everything. We call her Sally the social sleuth. (laughs) She's kind of got all the trends down and uh, she's kind of our our ears to the ground with with our people. We've got a content developer who's telling stories and writing emails and conversion copy. We've got a marketing manager who kind of handles the brand as a whole. And then an e-commerce manager who handles all of our back end, our data, making sure the product is right. So it's a really good team, very collaborative, uh, very fortunate with what we have here. That's awesome. No, that's great. And it gives you a lot of opportunity to uh, exemplify the things you learned from from leadership and, uh, you know, before. Um, do you, does you and your team or do you and your team work uh, with any external partners as a combination of, of the in-house team? Yeah, absolutely. So we roll up into a Berkshire Hathaway shoe holding all of their shoes that they that they um, manage. And so we've got a team that's remote from here and, and we lean into them for the back end data. We've got a great 
creative team up there and other divisions there more so in the women's fashion space, which is a very different business than the the men's workspace that we're in. Uh, but we're able to kind of bounce ideas around with each other. So that's a, you know, a, a separate team that we work with really closely. And as far as partners, we work with rodeos left and right. Uh, we work with George Strait, Reba McIntyre, some big names there, uh, as well as the AQHA, the biggest uh, breed registry for horses in the world. We work with them and, um, and our retailers, about 80% of our business is wholesale. And so our retailers are really, really important all the way up from the really big guys, your boot barn, your Cavenders, your Rural King Academy, down to the little guys who are kind of the core of our business and it's family owned brands. And um, they're really, really passionate and proud of the small store that their family's been able to build. Um, and so that's something that as a brand, we're trying to continually invest in. So yeah, lots of interaction with outside partners. I think that's kind of our secret sauce is uh, it's not just us. It is a really, a really big team that people care about this brand. So we're, we're lucky to be able to interface with them and all that. That sounds great. Um, you know, every marketing leader in the world has uh, things to celebrate and great campaigns and this and that, but every marketing leader also has uh, challenges, problems that, uh, you know, they may not have solved yet, but they're excited about chipping away at it. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us, uh, with me, um, two, two sides of this coin? One of them is like, what is what is a holistic sort of macro challenge that you and your team are excited to work within as it relates to your industry or the, the stuff that you're selling? And then if there's anything really micro, anything really in the weeds in terms of a, a problem with a channel or a certain, uh, certain thing you're working on, what are some of the challenges that you're faced with today, uh, you and your team? Yeah, I mean, as, as a whole, uh, we have been around... Justin's been around, we're celebrating 145 years next year. And that's massive. We have an archives department here where you can go back and find boots that we've made for some really influential people in the world, A-list celebrities, presidents, you name it. Um, so we have tons of history. With that, it is really easy to say, well, we've always done it this way. Uh -huh. And we need to constantly be innovating and looking towards the future, modernizing. Uh, you're seeing a lot of Western brands go very high fashion. And I can see the appeal there, but in the end, like Justin is that old school everyday brand. So there's this, there's this dance that we have to play, honoring that heritage, staying true to, to our roots and who we're going to be while also innovating and reaching Gen Z and millennials and going on TikTok and <laughs> all of those things that isn't necessarily the core of what Justin is. Justin is very, um, is a very humble brand. Our, our founder and, and his grandson, who was really pivotal here in Fort Worth and the brand as a whole, um, very humble man, really about helping rodeo athletes, doing the right thing and not really like showboating that. Right. And we have a really great charity here in house, the Justin Cowboy Crisis Fund. And we don't talk about it a lot. And so that's something that we're trying to do right now is we're a humble brand and we want to be humble, but we also need to toot our horn a little bit and kind of own that story. People really care about that. So yeah, that's kind of the, the overall dance. And then uh, beyond that, um, I think it's just, you know, down on a smaller level, it is, man, I'd probably have to say reaching, standing out in a pretty saturated market, more and more cowboy boot brands are coming to coming to market, uh, being able to stand out for that and, and get in front of Gen Z. Uh, one thing that we're starting to see is that Gen Z and millennials are a lot less brand loyal than former generations. And that's really good because if they're wearing someone else's brand, exactly. you know, we've got a chance to get them, but yeah. also if they're wearing our brand, there's a good chance they go to someone else. Um, so that's something we're trying to find. And you know, we're building a lifestyle brand here with adding in an apparel mix and auto accessories. And, and there's a lot more on the table that we'll be expanding into. And it's in former generations, you have your diehard Justin people and or your diehard Ford people. And those big brands that people are like, absolutely, that's all I'm going to ever wear. And it's a different time now. People want to wear what's new, what's trendy, what they saw, Justin Bieber wear, whoever. <laughs> And um, yeah, so that's kind of, I would say another, like a little bit smaller of a challenge is standing out and um, figuring that out. Yeah. 
Well, really what you need to do is get Taylor Swift to wear your stuff. We <laughs> were just that. talking about getting her onto our podcast. We were like, man, look at Travis Kelsey's numbers going up. We need to get her on there. <laughs> oh, man. As a, as a football guy, I, uh, there's, there, there's a group of, that doesn't want to hear it. I'm all yep. about it because I, it's bringing a new audience in and, uh, and that's, that's awesome. So for you with your team, you know, you got a, a fairly robust uh, internal team, um, you know, varying ages, varying uh, levels of experience. Uh, what has been your, um, what has been your established or kind of uh, evolved approach to creating direction and vision and, Hey guys, we're going this way. Uh, you know, let's, let's align together as a team. Tell me about direction setting. Absolutely. And this has really been, it's hard to do. Uh, one thing I talk about is we've got four brands and each of those brands has an e-commerce business and a wholesale business. And then we've got the rodeo side of it, our endorsees and our, the Cowboy Crisis Fund and the sports medicine team. There's a lot of different mini businesses within this business. So making sure they're all headed in the same direction, it's hard to do. And so one thing that on my team that we've kind of established and had a lot of a lot of fun with honestly is um, if you're familiar with coach K from Duke, yeah. he is really big on core values. And so uh, we got together as a team and talked through what are the 10 words that we want this, this team to be known for. If customer service says that marketing team is blank, what are those words that we want to say? Or um, the AQHA who we work with, we want them to say, Justin is blank. Every time we reach out to them, they are blank. And so we kind of agree to these words. And since then, every single weekly meeting we have, we choose our word of the week and we talk about what it means. We try to shout out someone who was very blank last week and right. ways that we're going to try to blank this week. Um, and so it's been really fun to be able to kind of lean into that. And it helps us be able to have hard conversations and go back to kind of what we agreed on. I was a really big summer camp counselor. I loved that. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, it's a little summer camp counselory, but when there's issues, we say, Hey, what happened today that really bothered us? Cause that wasn't really collaborative. And remember we all agreed, like we all signed this piece of paper, right. very summer camp counselor, but it was like, Hey, we agreed to be a collaborative and that you weren't including so-and-so in that conversation. That wasn't very collaborative. And it's right. less so about you did this wrong and more right. so of, Hey, we agreed to this. And right. I think we've stepped back from that. So how can we go back to, back to it? Uh, so that's been really powerful. I think uh, we also have our, and there certainly it's, it's a whole day of, of my time, but I really think it's worth it as we do monthly one-on-ones. So it's 45 minutes with everybody on the team, yeah. just, just me and them. Uh, try to go over wins and losses in the past month, make sure we're aligned in the month ahead. And basically like, how can I be better for you as a boss? Uh, what do I need more from you? And I think being able to have those smaller, harder conversations more frequently, you're, you're working that muscle, you're staying fit mm -hmm. in that area and um, just kind of treats it as a place where it's safe to say, Hey boss, I, you know, I'm not, I'm struggling over here. I'm waving my help flag or yeah. this thing that happened was really hard. How can you help me fix that? Cause that's, that's how I see leadership is your job is to shield your people from other stuff that's going on, only bring them the things that matter and, um, and really keep them headed in the right direction. So that's been really, really helpful for us. Um, I always try to lean into the conversation saying my intention here is to, right. it's not necessarily like, Hey, you did this wrong. And I really want to chastise you about this. It's like, no, our attention here is to, to grow closer as a team. Right. Um, another thing is just communication. Previously, uh, this we were really struggling with kind of sales, marketing, and product development. We were very siloed. Uh, there wasn't a ton of interaction between them. And uh, it was really easy whenever you're siloed and not communicating with another department, it's easy to say, well, they did that. Yeah. And so having regular meetings and I probably work with them more so on, on the average week than my own team. Right. And that's kind of how it needs to be and interfacing with them and hearing each other out, trying to say, it's not the, the marketing show or the sales show. It's like, no, it's the Justin show. We're all on that mm. same team. Uh, and I think that that communications really help because then you're not blindsided by something. Everybody knows what's happening. We actually, we have an open concept here. Um, so there's no secrets here. And that's a, that's <laughs> yeah. a really good thing. I think yeah. it's hard on certain days, but 
it keeps us running in the same direction and we have our hands in a lot of different things, but if we can communicate, we all kind of know the general direction we're headed and um, keep us up to speed there and just um, just honest, really. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I want to validate uh, that I heard this correctly because it's the first time I've heard something like this, um, but let me know if I heard it wrong. So yeah. uh, companies have you know, a set of organizational core values and stuff. like. It sounded to me like you're, you're almost building a culture within a culture. Is that true? Like, it's like, like a marketing and sales set of ways of doing things nested under the, the way we do things at Justin Brad. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, as a whole, when you look at our team, we are a predominantly younger team. Right. And we go to, we're really privileged to get, because marketing is very customer facing, uh, we get to do a lot of really fun and cool things. And so I think in years past, it's been this struggle of marketing gets to do all the fun stuff. Marketing is just fun. (laughs) And so I want this perception of our company to say, oh no, marketing is the one that they are busting their butts. They're dependable. They respond to emails. Yeah, they're having fun, but they're also, we rely on them. They're consistent. Um, they're not just out there at some concert. There's a very specific reason that we're capturing content or whatever. And that, I think that's one thing that the communication has helped is, um, we used to operate very independently from the company, which is interesting and Hmm. trying to pull back the curtain and say, Hey, we're launching this on these days because that brings value to our retail stores that we have. It brings value to our sales guys, they can bring that to their accounts and say, Hey, this is delivering on this day. We're going to start pushing it. You may want to kind of line yours up the same helps our customer service team know when they're going to get an influx of calls about X, Y, Z. And it's really just helped us kind of say, this is what we are. We're not hiding anything. Um, and as you know, as a department that outside looking in looks like we're just always having fun. I think it's been really important to, um, kind of earn the respect of the rest of our company and not to say that we, we didn't have their respect, but I, I want us to be that department that is definitely dependable. And yeah, we're having a lot of fun while we do it. (laughs) I want to pull on that a little bit where um, you bring up the topic of uh, integrating the marketing department across the ecosystem of the organization. Is there anything that you were very intentional about in terms of facilitating uh, this integration so that marketing isn't over here and everything else is over there. How do you create those, those ties? Yeah. One really good example is this past year, we went through a warehouse transition. So Mm -hmm. we used to work out of a a warehouse that we were essentially paying to manage. And now we we're transitioned over to one that we own. It's staffed by our employees, not an external agency. And as you can imagine, that was a beast moving warehouses. It's a big deal. Ask any company that's done it. Um, and they will have some fun stories that you'll probably want to have over a beer. Um, but part of that is there was this time when we had so many orders that were on the table that needed to go out and we had all these booths that were ready, but we did not have the staff at the warehouse to set them in the right spot and get them ready for that order. And so there was a three month window where every Friday, I split the team in half and half of our team was at the warehouse from 5 a.m. till 3 p.m., which is their shift. And we were there with our DC workers alongside them, getting to know them, shipping out boots, uh, getting content for social media and for our retailers. And that was a really, it was early, early mornings. It was dusty work, Uh, but I think it was able to show of like, Hey, this team, they're selling boots. They, care about getting boots out the door so that we can get money in the pocket. And I think it was a really good time for us to be able to learn a little bit about another department and respect their unique struggles and strengths. And um, yeah, it was really, it was fun. I mean, we were sweaty slinging boxes and stuff, but it was team bonding for us. And I think it helped the DC DC team have a little bit of a, Oh, Hey, they'll do what needs to get done. And um, there's been times when, you know, sales or PD, they have an area that they're trying to clean out. And we try to always, anytime we can jump in and help out because right. I never want it to be the marketing show, the the sales show, the PD show. It's like, it's the Justin show. We got to roll up our sleeves and get to work. And um, at a recent show that we had in Dallas at our showroom, 
everyone's dressed to the nines. Um, mm-hmm. having, we're having a, a party there. And I was asking the the people on my team, hey, if you see trash, put in a trash bag and take it out. And so people are walking by in dresses, carrying trash bags. And uh, that's really important. Our president, he was doing the same exact thing. And I uh, just want everybody to know that we're not above anything. And if yeah. it's for the brand, it's the right thing to do. That's awesome. I, I get the sense that you can feel that uh, togetherness when you're a new employee walking in. Is that a uh, tell me a little bit about um, indoctrination is the wrong word, but um, mm-hmm. What does the yeah. first 30 days look like some look like to someone on you on your team? Yeah, honestly, um, I am a trial by fire, jump right in, you learn by doing kind of person. Uh, we don't really have a strict roadmap for here's this manual, you need to learn everything there is to know about boots. Right. But typically what we'll do is we'll send them to the factory to spend a couple of days out there, learn how boots are made, meet the men and women out in El Paso who make our boots, get to know them. Uh, spend some time with the DC, learn what that looks like, spend some time with sales, sitting down with a, a retailer and hear their speak, ask a ton of questions, sit with the transportation department, learn what it takes to coordinate getting a container full of boots uh, from overseas across into a port when there's a strike happening. Yeah. Those things that you just don't think about whenever you think about marketing, you're not just posting on social media. There's a lot more to it. Um, a lot of yeah, asking questions, jumping in and throwing projects your way. I mean, we're a pretty fast paced environment and we're pretty much always go, go, go. So I need people that can handle that. And I think yeah. my team is really good because, and I, it's really easy to tell when you walk in, everyone's really passionate. We all love our jobs. We have a ton of fun doing it, but we also work really, really hard. Right. And there's some days where you work late because there's a rodeo or there's a show or there's some party that we're a part of. Um, but you love your job, you're having fun doing it. So it doesn't feel like work, um, and, you know, lifting each other up and giving space when we need to give space. And I think that's been able to help us be passionate about what we do, be able to separate on the weekends and take your personal time, but also, um, not complain when the work is really, really hard because it's that, that idea of immersing, uh, new folks on your team into the different you know, components of the business, almost like instilling a sense of empathy before uh, mm-hmm. building. Is that something you read in a book you learned over time? Like, well, why was this layered in? Cause it's yeah. not traditional, I guess. Yeah. I um, kind of a little bit about doing everything. I really, I say that a lot of my, I learned a lot of my leadership it may sound kind of strange, but I learned it from my horse Uh, grew up riding horses and taking care of my horses. And, uh, you know, when you wake up in the morning before you feed yourself, you have to go feed your horse. And after, when I get home from school, I had to go work a job to be able to make some money to be able to afford that horse. And then I had to go out to the barn and feed them and ride them and all of that and, um, budget my, my time and my finances for the horse. Think about the horse first. And, uh, also a horse is a prey animal. And so they look to their riders as the protector Hmm. and you're, if they're really scared, you can also be scared or they're going to freak out. Uh, so you have to learn how to be calm and be confident and firm when you need to be firm because they could kill you if they wanted to. So you're firm, but you're not cruel or mean. And I, I really think looking back that I learned a lot of that leadership skills from time with horses, And, um, yeah, I mean, whenever I right out of college, I worked at a startup, it was very, very small team. I was employee number one and I got to saw, see that boss do a little bit of everything. And he was never above any small task and he really modeled that for me and then freelanced for a while and kind of built my own little photography business and learned the ins and outs of that. And then when I came here, I'm really fortunate to have a a boss here who he models by example, he's never above anything. He's very hands-on, but not micromanaging. And so he's, he's really, um, poured into me and kind of coached me up to where I need to be. And, uh, that's been really invaluable. So I, I would owe, I would owe that to reading horses and some good bosses. <laughs> that's awesome. No, yeah. that's fantastic. It's, it's, uh, it's always fascinating to look back on, on, uh, career journey and, and see the different bits and pieces that have come together to, uh, uh, to, you know, 
sort of become who you are today as a leader. I think that that's very cool. And uh, the horse bit is awesome. There should be a whole book on that, right? Leader yeah. through through uh, horse training. That's awesome. Yeah. A little unconventional, but I, uh, looking back on it, I'm like, man, it was, it was the horses. <laughs> yeah. So with such an, uh, an old and established brand, you, you kind of alluded to it earlier, um, needing to get a bit innovative with different channels and techniques and tools. Can we talk about the, the area of marketing that, uh, seems to change all the time? So t- high level, um, what does your digital marketing stack and strategy look like? And what role does it play in the overall uh, fulfillment of the business case that you're trying to fulfill. Yeah. So, you know, in our footwear space, there's a lot of, some brands are pulling back from B2B and just going direct to consumer. And so the fact that we have a website that is direct to consumer, it's easy for our sales team and our, our retailers to look at that sometimes and be a little threatened by the website, thinking it's taking sales from their doors. Right. Uh, one thing I've been really trying to, to, to speak into for our sales reps, so they can communicate this to our accounts is that our website is, while yes, we are selling boots, it is driving demand and furthering our brand, which will help them in store. So for example, we've got um, our kick your boots up podcast and she's hosting stories of these rodeo athletes and these charities and some retailers and just creating buzz. And then same thing, we've got a blog that's a storytelling blog, highlighting welders and rodeo athletes and um, dairy farms, really kind of the gamut. And we have landing pages that talk about our technology and all the different facets there. And yes, our website is focused on growing, but our, our hope is that our website and our presence there is always pushing demand to stores and, you know, our social media too, while in a lot of our posts, we're tagging the specific style that you can go and shop right there. It's still, it's still with the intention of we're furthering the brand. We want people seeing into gin, into gin, into gin all the time. So that they walk into a cafe and say, I saw this thing. I want that into gin. Where is it? Um, so that's a big part of it. We're trying to really dial in on the storytelling side of it, less so features and benefits, more so is what does this mean? What is the lifestyle? Uh, How does that translate to the the customer? Steel toe is a steel toe. Uh, That's a feature, but the benefit is that it keeps you safe, which means that you're confident on the work site, which means you're not stressing, which means you go home to your wife and you had a good day because nothing bad happens and you have have a great dinner. that's the story that we're trying to really lean into and less so steel toe. Um, We're also trying to, you know, we invest a lot in the rodeo space. And like I said, we've had, we've been very, very humble there. Uh, We're trying to really scream from the mountaintops that we've got this crisis fund that sends a hundred percent of donations directly to injured athletes and their families. Mm. While they can't ride, they still get to feed the kids and that's really important to us. So um, trying to tell those stories a little bit more. Um, But yeah, I mean, digital is just, it's always changing. We're really fortunate to have our corporate branch that's up in Boston help us with the digital side of it. We've got a really strong team there that knows everything. And we just try to stay scrappy and also a little humble Mm -hmm. because the second we figure out the algorithm, it's changing. So we're trying to always learn from what we did last week and build upon it, uh, knowing that another change is coming tomorrow. That's great. Mm -hmm. Um, Because your time at Justin was uh, was initiated by, um, I think, on the content side and then marketing manager. And so obviously there's there's a belief in the brand and there's an enthusiasm you hold about being a part of this brand. So for folks that that's the similar case for they want to stay with the same company and then uh, you know, ultimately at some point become marketing director, VP, CMO. Tell us a little bit about your journey through those different roles and and what experience share could you give someone else that that wants to stay with the same company, but increase their role and responsibility towards a leadership position? Yeah, I mean, this has kind of really happened at both companies I've worked with where you kind of come in ground level. And I think that that's really good because uh, you stay humble. You're thankful to be there. You're like, oh my gosh, this company is on a great mission. I'm so lucky to be a part of this. You're scrappy. You're learning everything. And once you kind of get your feet underneath you, 
I think my biggest piece of advice is to not wait for someone to tell you to fix a problem, see a problem and jump in and fix it. And I think at both of my climbs at my previous company and at this company has been, I would credit it to, I didn't wait around for a list of things to do. It was, Hey, we need a storytelling blog. Let's go ahead and get this off the ground. We've never done it before. I guess I got to figure it out. Uh, At my former company, it was, Hey, outsource photography is really expensive. I'm going to go on YouTube and figure out how to take good photos and same thing with graphic design. Then we don't have an outside agency. Um, Whenever I was in the content role, it was, Hey, our release time, when we release all of our boots to retailers about, you know, six to nine months before it hits shelves for consumers during release time, it's kind of a mess. Like we're all over the place and or it's always a scramble. How can I create a schedule that helps us stay ahead of time and uh, be a little proactive, less reactive and really communicate everything that we need from everybody. Um, so that wasn't really done before. And then when I stepped into the marketing manager role, um, it was looking, yes, being down in the weeds, but also really looking big picture. I tried to always um, help alleviate the workload of my boss. Right. I think that's always really important and uh, good bosses reward that. And they, they lean into you and you kind of become a, I feel like at, at both companies, I've been really fortunate to be like the right hand man. Right. And I think that's a good place to be because you learn from really good people, your leaders and um, you're depend if you're dependable, they're going to call you and they're going to give you a project because uh, they know you're going to figure out how to get it done. And there's going to be hard days. I think just remembering the good days on, on hard days and remembering that you like what you do. I uh, try to keep a success folder where I get an email compliment or a someone texts me a nice compliment of something that we did, print it out, put it in the folder because there's mm-hmm. going to be days when it sucks. And you're like, what is going on here? What have I done? You open up the folder, you see, oh man, we've come a really long way. We're getting compliments. I forgot about this compliment about how our marketing hasn't been this good in a decade that fuels me on really hard days. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my big picture. (laughs) That's great. Yeah. I, uh, I could talk to you for another hour. I have two more questions though. Um, (laughs) I think that I know, but honestly, I think you're exemplifying true leadership and true marketing leadership and, uh, um, uh, a very good example that other (laughs) marketers, aspiring (laughs) marketing leaders should be looking to. So thank you for that. Um, you talked a lot about, you know, some of your superpowers as a marketing leader. I'm curious to understand from you, what have you identified maybe this year or going into next year as an area that you uh, very much recognize an area of weakness that you want to improve on and and why does that come to mind? Yeah, I would say really this past year, um, stepping into the leadership role that I have I'm a creative at heart and with that comes really big emotions and I really love my job. And that's important to me to love what I do. It's a big part of kind of who I am is, is that, that job and working hard. My parents really modeled that for me. And so it's really easy to get wrapped up in something being personal and, and hurting and stepping into the leadership role and managing the team that I do. I had to realize I have to model the behavior that the, the women on my team need to follow. And I can see them taking things personally and, um, working so hard and something doesn't go as planned. And it's like, man, that really hurts. And being able to model and step back from that myself and, uh, kind of create that, that boundary has been Mm -hmm. a weakness in the past that I've really built on this year. And something that we say a lot around here is it's just boots. We aren't <laughs> keeping brain cancer. Um, it is just boots. There's days when we miss the mark on something and it's easy to be like, oh my gosh, the world is laughing at us. And it's like, hey, it's just boots. We're lucky to have a really fun mm. and kind of easy job when it comes to the grand scheme of what we're marketing. It's it's a fun thing to be able to market um, for this year. And this is something that's just ongoing is I am not a very confrontational person. And this is a role that I, I have a decent amount of confrontation. And initially that was really, really hard for me. Um, I've been trying to just really lean into the relationships. It's really easy to be able to have a confrontation with somebody who I know respects me and I respect them and they know that I respect them. I think about that's all all the time. I fight with my husband, but he knows at the end of the day, we're good. Yeah. Uh, easy to do that. Some random person that I barely know. It's like, Ooh, I don't want to get mad at this person. This is going to be really awkward. So trying to invest in the relationship so that 
when there is a struggle, we can kind of meet halfway and then just having the emotional intelligence to know what battles to pick, which ones not to pick, right. when to go belly up, when not to go belly up and stick my ground, but in a way that is respectful and kind. Uh, that's something that is kind of an ongoing focus for me and something that, again, I'm trying to model for my team yeah. um, as a public facing department, it is, you know, there's going to be confrontation. So um, being able to kind of translate to them has been something I've, I've really been focusing on. Good for you. No, that's, yeah. I love the way the, I love the way you're playing this game and and I do consider it a game. A lot, like you yeah. said, just, it's just boots. Um, it's mm-hmm. a game. It's a, it's a meaningful game where you get the chance to leave meaningful impressions on, on people on your team, just like one was left on you with, with previous uh, bosses. So uh, just want to encourage you to keep doing it the way it sounds like you're doing it right now. Uh, Leave us with this, Um, you know, five years from now, when you look into the crystal ball, like where, where is, what are some of the things that come into clarity uh, for the brand and for your department? What does the good news story sound like or look like to you? Yeah, I, I would say, um, as a legacy brand, we have for a long time, I mean, decades, we have been the it brand in the cowboy boot space. Super candidly in the past, probably 10 years or so, we've lost that. Uh, there was a time when I think former management said they're never going to catch us. We are untouchable. And in that time, some really great brands have been able to prove themselves and they've uh, they've climbed and jumped ahead of us. And, um, that's something that we are trying to always recognize so that we don't, um, we're not trying to get too big for our britches kind of thing and realize, take a little slice of humble pie. Um, they did a good job getting to where they are. And so we have a lot in the works right now. We have some really, really good management here. The, the, the ship is starting to turn, what I've been saying is uh, I think this second half of this year, some competitor competitors of ours have started being like, Oh, we need to start watching them again. Uh, right. So my goal is in those next five years, um, we're going to be back at the top and that's, it's hard to really quantify. Um, and obviously shelf space and yeah. pairs sold all of that growing our e-commerce business for sure. Becoming a lifestyle brand, with various categories, uh, but the intangible is the it brand. Yeah. Well, only knowing you for an hour, I uh, I actually believe you when you say that yeah. <laughs> we yeah. are the it brand. So <laughs> I do too. I think people are going to start start looking our way. So yeah, <laughs> that's awesome, Jessica. Thank you so much for your time. Um, you know, like I said, I'd love to chat for another hour. Yeah. Lots of value you've offered through sharing your experience and um, uh, just a great job playing the game. So uh, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate your time. <laughs>